My name is Craig Solomon, and I'm the Executive Director at Wesley Child Care. All right, everybody, Chris Belkin here, and this is the story behind the business. Today, I have the Executive Director of Wesley Child Care, Craig Solomon, with me. Craig, you're a strong voice and a trusted ear, but right now we are going to get to the story behind the business. Why did you get into, and how did you get into kind of being an Executive Director of a facility like Wesley Child Care? So I had, and thanks, thanks for having me here. I had the pleasure of, of working with Wesley young into my career and working in um, its programs, uh, then had the ability to return to Wesley as its executive director. I've known it to be such a fine organization, such an anchor in the community. They've done such fine work and it, it's, it's more of, a pleasure to serve in that capacity. You know, I, I know that, I mean, you have had a wealth of experience um, and, and a lot of that with Chicago public schools. Um, I mean, was your career path, was it full of detours? Like it, it seems like somehow you kind of funneled into advocating and utilizing all of these skills that you have in a way that benefits children, you know, did, did you kind of bounce around to, to get to that point or was it a straight shot towards advocating and caring for so many lives? And these are important lives. This is our future. So like I mentioned, I, I started my career um, in, in working part time and working full time at Wesley many years ago. Um, since then, uh, since that time, I had the ability to to do a lot in and around education, education sector, um, nonprofits. Um, I, I taught um, in, in a school system. I worked as a policy advisor for the Chicago Board of Ed, the Chicago Public Schools. Um, then I worked in education consulting, working in and around schools and school districts throughout the country and companies that would interface with schools and school districts. Um, and had a unique opportunity to pick up a lot along the way, learn quite a bit, and, um, you know, kind of as I'm saying that these days is return home to, uh, to Wesley, which, is, which was a great foundation for my career and has become a great growth spot um, for continuing that uh, today. Yeah, I, I think that's... Um you know, that's powerful to say that, you know, you, you kind of started with, with Wesley in a way, and now you've kind of come full circle and you're with Wesley again. I believe heavily in mentorship. Um, who kind of mentored you? I mean, even maybe even early in those Wesley days, but who maybe mentored you when you were on your path? And how important a role does mentorship play in the programming over at Wesley today? Well, I, I, I've heard you speak of it quite a bit about mentors along the way. And I think what um, we both share is there's never going to be one mentor only that shapes your life. Um, but it's, it's how you take those lives and those experiences of others and the wealth of knowledge that others have in shaping um, who you are and what the work you do can become. Um, it can, uh, when I think of mentors, um, you know, the floodgate opens and faces and people and names um, and people that are just alongside you every day should be thought of as mentors because they should help shape how you think of things. Because if you only go with the way you think, um, uh, it, it's a very one-sided coin and that doesn't work out. Um, but uh, to answer your question about those that have shaped my life, there, there's many. Um, uh, and I, and I, and I, and I think that's an important um, attribute to have. Uh, you know, a couple come to mind. Um, one uh, uh, mentor early in my um, public service career um, um, taught me uh, quite a bit, and, and it was in and around a couple things. Um, and it was, you know, if you're going to do work of service, um, uh, this, this, this show is not about you. Um, you know, uh, you have to do it in a selfless manner. It's how do you, and this was said to a whole group of people, um, all of which would have interpreted it differently, but how would you like to spend your, your 60 hours a week um, working in a job 
where you will absolutely gain no credit for the work that you do, but you will get to see all the benefit of, the, of that work. And um, it was really a good tone to set um, for public service. I think it's a good tone to set into other private and public and for-profit areas too. But if not always feeling that the work you do should always come with kudos, but you can reap the benefits of, of, of you know, the implementation. So, well, um, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, very powerful stuff and, and couldn't be more true. I think anybody that knows you knows that you always give all of your time, talent and passion to whatever it is that you do. Um, and, and whether or not you, you get credit for that all the time, who knows, right? But I know that your effort and your time and your passion is felt in the community. So I want to thank you for that. But I wonder if you could give a bit of advice to someone who wanted to have an impact in the world, whether it was through entrepreneurship or through service, what bit of advice might you give someone who was just kind of starting out, but had all the right ambitions, but has no idea which direction to go? Yeah, I, I think, you know, it, know what you don't know is, is, is a, is a, is a big That's one. A good one. <laughs> That's but, a good one. Um, you know, you, you can't gain all that knowledge in one day. You can't go from a starting position to the CEO in a day and nor should you want to. Um, um, but what you can do, you know, sometimes you can't out know something that other people do, but you can, you can outwork people. Um, that's all in your own, that, that ball's in your court. Um, I've always talked about the attribute of work ethic. Um, I think that is something that's in you and you either have to go searching for it and bring it out. Um, but if you don't have that work ethic, um, you can get past and, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that get lucky, but strong work ethic, um, I think will always in my mind prevail. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think that these days with all of the challenges that we have considering, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, this is certainly a time where having a strong work ethic, resilience, all that stuff is really going to help. But uh, how do you see, um, you know, the world of education, childcare, service, what are you guys, and let's even really be specific to Wesley, what are you guys going to need to do to adapt moving forward based on us experiencing and seeing something that quite frankly, none of us ever thought would happen? How are you guys going to adapt moving forward? And what's the, what do you think the world's going to look like tomorrow? I, I think it goes back to those two attributes. I think it's knowing at this point, knowing what we don't know. Um, I think it's, it's surrounding ourselves with, you know, it goes back to your question about mentorship. It's, I have a board of a board of directors that are extremely smart people who have passions in different areas and using those resources around us to be able to put an adaptable, safe experience for kids um, to action. Um, my administrative team is fantastic. Our teachers and staff and families, it's gonna take everybody to make the safest of environments work um, in this new now, um, if you will. Um, th this new now is, it, it's, it's in two day cycles. So we need everyone to adapt that change um, because tomorrow is different. Um, hopefully it's better than today. Um, but uh, I, I guess my, my advice on, or our take on this is, is it's, we're gonna have to be adaptable and we're gonna have to be safe. Safe is, safe is priority. Well, I, I know the children and the families and the staff that you have over there are going to be in fantastic hands. Um, but I got to ask, I mean, what, what do you believe truly makes Wesley special? And what do you think makes the Glenview community a special place? I mean, Wesley's here. It could have been, I guess, maybe anywhere. I don't know truly the history, but, but it is here. So why is Wesley you know, special and why is Glenview special? Um. Wesley was founded in 1972. It's a nonprofit 
um, that, um, that was brought out to serve the community. Um, one thing I'll say for Wesley, while it's re reinvented itself at times, um, it stayed true to its mission to serve the community. Um, and that is thankfully because of the wonderful families, the wonderful staff, and our, you know, and our leadership. Now, Glenview on the other, uh, on the other side of the coin is interwoven into everything we do. So Glenview and this community is, is Wesley. Um, and Wesley is this community. Um, it was founded by community members and it's, it's maintained by community as well. I mean, I agree with you. I think that Glenview has, uh, the, the service roots are very, very deep. So Wesley's in the right place and you are in the right place. So I wanna thank, thank you. you so much for the work that you do over there. Um, tireless, just incredible work. A lot of times thankless work, but I, want, I really do wanna thank you for that. And thank you for sharing the story behind the business. Thanks, Chris.